Hi everyone and welcome to Adobe Live for another live event. This time it's a very special one because we are live from New York. So I'm Michael, uh, we'd be happy to host the show. I, I'm with Rufus too, if you know Rufus, he's there with me in New York. And we are live from the 99U conference in a beautiful venue, the Lincoln Center. Uh, if you don't know what 99U conference is, it's a conference for your creative career. It's organized by Behance, so we are with our Behance friends. and. We took this opportunity to welcome uh, top creatives from New York uh, over two days. So we will be live for, for eight hours today and eight hours tomorrow from 9 a.m. Uh, East time to 5 p.m. So this would be awesome. And uh, yeah, I see some people in the chat. Hi, Matthias. Hi, Tale. Hey, Daniel. Uh, Michael, thanks for joining. Let us know where you are from. Uh, we have someone from Tampa. New haircut? Yeah, always. Just for you, Michael. <laughs> Um, and uh, hi from Turkey, it's awesome. And we'll start the day with uh, uh, motion designers. I'm super happy because I'm a big fan of motion design. And uh, I will let you know how I found uh, Chris. I just used Behance and I said, okay, show me the top designers in New York. And boom, he was there. Oh, that's too kind. Hey, Chris. <laughs> Welcome. Hey, thank you for having me on. Yeah, this is your first live stream with us. It is, it is. Yeah. It's my first live stream ever, actually. Yeah, oh, okay, yeah. it's awesome. So, so yeah, pretty fun. Just uh, say uh, welcome to Chris <laughs> in the chat. We have people from the Netherlands, Poland, Germany, Ooh, Denmark, hey, Europe, cool. yeah, Belgium. Um, Sweden, hello. And uh, so the 1990 conference is really uh, you know, about creativity, your career. Uh, so we wanted to invite designers and give you the opportunity to ask any question about the creative industry, okay? We only have like creative professionals, real pros with us uh, for two days. So really take the opportunity to ask questions to Chris. We will start by reviewing his work, you know, we will share who you are, what you're working on. And also we will review portfolios uh, that has been uh, shared by the community. If you can just, you know, provide some feedback, some insight. Yeah, that sounds you know, awesome. Right? Okay. That'll be fun. Okay, that's good. So. Let's start, um, and uh, now we will discover your Behance page. So Chris, maybe you want to introduce yourself? Uh, sure, sure. My name is Chris. I am natively from Ohio. I am Ohio. born and raised. Again. Yeah. I, I live in New York now. I moved here about four years ago. Um, yeah, and I am a motion designer. I like to make things move. So that's kind of my MO. How did he, uh, how did he start? Because motion design is a very, uh, I mean, uh, requires a lot of dedication, you know, a lot of time. It's tedious, to run, right? To, it's tedious. So, uh, do you remember when you uh, had this first feeling like, oh, okay, I want to animate, I want to really take the time to invest in animation? I do. Yeah. I was uh, I was a music major in college for a little while before switching to design, and I just loved rhythm and how that it affected um, design. Because I also, I basically just love design and music, and I saw something animate one time in like 2007. And I was like, wow, that's amazing. I need to learn how to do that. Okay. So that's kind of where that, that came from. It was like this magical feeling like, wow, I need to learn how to create something that beautiful. Okay. I feel like Chris and I, we have exactly the same background. So this is where <laughs> <laughs> I come from music too. So it's, it's interesting. Um, OK, so maybe we can start by uh, just uh, you know, showing oh, some projects. Checking so, some things out, huh? So our friends understand what, you know, what is your work. Cool, uh, sure. Which one do you want to start? Let's see, uh, I'll start with this one. OK. This is a piece that I did. For um, it's for MGM. It, uh, we did it at Buck um, a few, maybe a few months ago. Okay. And I guess I'll like look through some design. Essentially, this is just a 30-second TV spot. Oh. It's uh, to announce this contest that they were having, um, the scratch and prize giveaway kind of contest sort of thing. And I guess I'll just play it real quick. Yeah, let's play it. Okay. And. Um so for the audio, I really invite you also to visit uh, Chris Project. Oh, here we go. I won. Yeah, right? It's the story of this coin that's like traveling through this oh golden world, God. right? And there was like some prizes. I like the, it's got depth, it off to the, the depth the side. of field. Oh, it's thanks, really yeah. Good. It's very like Art Deco kind of inspired piece. Okay. Um, the guys at Buck designed it. It was really awesome. I just kind of was more of the animation side. But yeah, I think it was like a really, really cool thing to do in terms of like... And this is for TV, so... Do you have any constraints when you when you work for TV or really like in terms of format? Like I, ne I never had the opportunity to work for TV. So. Um, the format is mainly just essentially like a thirty second. It has to be thirty. Oh, it has but to be thirty. But within that thirty, I guess the way that this is structured is is at the end there's like a lot of information in oh. terms of like end tag information that we kind of had to cram in after like the beautiful art. Okay. Um, but yeah, I guess once it goes through this tunnel, there was like 
other little art pieces to the side yeah. of the different prizes and whatever, and that's kind of how they announced that. I don't know why it's... Yeah, no, I think just real there. The Vimeo player. And uh, so you massively uh, use uh, Cinema 4D, I guess? Mm -hmm. Cinema 4D a lot, yeah. Yeah, Cinema 4D. With the direct link with, um, with After Effects. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Yeah. You go, yeah, with the dynamic link. Sometimes I do that. Sometimes I just render out. Okay. But yeah, and it just depends. Your, yeah. Because I use Octane as well, so oh, okay. I usually kind of render out in cinema and then bring it into After Effects. Makes sense. Yeah. Awesome. And so, and uh, so to uh, to get this style, like, do you build a mood board before? Like, do you do some mm -hmm. research on art deco? And yeah, yeah. There was like a mood board, um, and then kind of like a style, okay. like, and then some style frames, and then the story was built. Like, we would storyboard out very rough, kind of the, how the animation would go, and uh, and then we built it. Yeah. But kind of like as we were going through this tunnel, like there's like these little oh, golden yeah. prizes, like this headphone and Headphones. these like this ring and that kind of thing off to the side. Nice. But the idea, I think, was just to tell the story of this coin, like oh yeah. wow, we're winning, we're just like winner. The coin. Yeah, yeah. and then it kind of path. it travels through, and oh wow, so it was fun. Awesome. Yeah, so, so people are sharing their portfolio. That's cool. So we'll review some portfolio later. Okay, stay with us, and uh, thanks for sharing. On to the next, I suppose. And again, if you have any questions for Chris, you know, on this project, yeah, don't hesitate. Okay, next one. What do you want to share? Maybe we'll go uh, this Nick at Night rebrand. Nick at Night. So what is Nick at Night? So Nick at Night is a, uh, it's a basically a different sub channel in Nickelodeon, and oh. it's a lot of old reruns of old shows like Fresh Prince, Friends, oh. kind of like older classic shows. My generation. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> But yeah, um, so essentially this project was, oh. the whole goal of it was to kind of give, take iconic moments from like various shows. Oh, Sticky Cat. Yeah, Smelly Cat from Friends, Smelly right? Cat. To okay. take all these iconic moments and um, and give them like a cohesive oh, design I remember style. This also. Oh, the turkey from yeah, Friends too? From Friends, yeah. And then this is like the Carlton dance from Fresh Prince. Oh, Carlton dance. Yeah. Okay, this one, well, wow, it's tricky. This is, I don't, uh, that, have, okay, you do you want to try? Open okay, the chat. we'll see if people can figure okay. it out. If I actually know, didn't even know what that was from, too. Okay, so before. let's try to find a reference to this one. You know what this is? Yes, I okay. do. And Chris will let you know. The cartoon, yeah, you got it, Daniel. Cartoon Benz is that. And if you scroll down, Hi, I Handel, think there's gifts, too. From LA. Oh, Handel, he's one of my good buddies. Yeah, you know Handel? <laughs> yes, I do. He's in the chat. I know, I see him out there. <laughs> behave, behave. It's surprising Handel that he's watching. awake because he's in LA, so it's pretty early over there. Just for you. Yeah, just for me, I guess. <laughs> So if you scroll down, there's some gifts too. Is it 3D? This or is it? Real yeah, this paper? was uh, this was 3D. It's oh not real God. paper. It's all designed. This looks like real paper. Mm -hmm. Oh, nice. So basically, we would just create like little motifs for each kind of for each kind of uh, show. So this was like the friends couch with the friends oh, umbrellas and yeah, da, 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 da. yeah, yeah. Okay. And that's kind of like, I don't even remember what that one's from. Smell you later. It's some probably blue line or something. This one we don't want to know. Yeah, you don't want to know that uh, yet. Okay. The front, <laughs> this one is awesome. Oh, thanks. Oh my god. Did you shoot the picture? I mean, how did you get the. Uh, oh, someone. it looks like someone uh, figured uh, uh, uh. out the show in the yeah. live chat. So, what is the show? Uh, it's George Lopez, I think. Okay, I have no idea what it is. I know. I've actually never seen it either. So, <laughs> that's probably not good. Yeah. <laughs> But good job in the chat. You know George Lopez. Yeah, Danielle, good job. Ah, uh, Will, Joe, okay, nice. Oh, and George, okay. I think that was more of a generic, well, and then this one is like, is it oh, like the a, Carlton dance. Uh, stop motion? Um, no, this was actually live action that we just composited over. Shot on really? green screen, yeah. Wow. But we, we took it down. Basically, I took the footage. So this is you? <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> I took the footage and I put it in After Effects and I um, posterized timed it or whatever. Okay. So I made it like 12 frames per second so it looked a little bit more stop motion. Oh. Okay. Okay, do we want to play the piece? Sure, sure, yeah. Might as well. And in the little corner there's oh like God. each show oh, title. Nice. Yeah. Just so you guys. Some of them are more like generic just for the TV identity. <laughs> this was my favorite one to do. Oh my god. So did you have to do the art direction for everything? Mm -hmm. Even like uh, taking the video of the cat and everything? Yeah, and then like compositing it. It was me and like two other of my friends that kind of cohesively did like the art direction okay. for, for, the, for the whole thing. 
So how long does it take to create a piece like this? Because you have so many shots. There's a lot. It's like some shots are a lot quicker, right? This shot wasn't as this shot wasn't as challenging because it's mainly 3D and there's just a little bit of cell. Um, okay, the real so time you, consuming is stuff is the cell. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So we would kind of draw on top of it. Right. So this only took like maybe a few days. But okay. like this this shot um, of the cat, let's see. Where's the cat? I don't know, here right here. This was drawn like frame by frame. Wow. And it's like, it was initially, or originally 10 seconds long. So it was a lot of frames to draw. So it, it took quite a, long, quite a long time. That took me like, I don't know, did you almost a week maybe. Yeah, and you did that? Mm -hmm. You did the drawing, yeah. Mm -hmm. Directly in After Effects, frame by frame? Actually, this was in Photoshop. Photoshop, in Photoshop, Photoshop yeah. yeah. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Oh, someone said it's hard to hear. I wonder, a lot of background noise. Knows. Oh, there's my buddy Eddie. Oh, yeah. We'll work on it, don't worry. Yeah, because we're alive. I mean, they can show you with the GoPro, which are really, we are in the middle of the 1990 conference. Usually we are live from the studio, but this time, no. We are live from New York, so that's why we have, uh, yeah, some people around us having some coffee, but they will be Donuts. soon. Yeah. <laughs> they will be soon in the, in the theater attending a conference, so it should be more quiet. Uh, what program do you use for the videos? Okay, so maybe we can summarize all the all the tools that you use. Sure, sure. This. So all like the actual footage content, I use After Effects for. I'll like okay. composite in After Effects. Sometimes if there's like a lot of footage to edit, I'll throw it in Premiere and then bring it in After Effects. Yep. But mainly just After Effects. And then for the 3D, I use Cinema 4D. I render. <coughs> excuse me. I render an Octane. Okay. And uh, yeah, and for like cell animation, it's Photoshop. Photoshop with the timeline. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is a 3D too, the neon light. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The neon is 3D, so that's all cinema. Yeah. I actually rendered that one in V-Ray, but that was oh. before switching to Octane. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, hello, Juan Pablo. 99U is okay. I can show you a conference in New York. It's organized by Behance, uh, and it's about your creative career. So you have a lot of speakers. See Debbie Millman, Rick Webb. Actually, we will have two speakers live with us uh, from 1990. Cool. They'll be live on the show. There will be a Mike Perry. Oh, guy. I saw his. Uh, I saw his work the other day. Yeah. It's really cool. And we will have also Natasha. She works for uh, Pentagram. Oh, cool, like a cool. Big uh, creative agency based in New York. Uh, Mike will be live with us today. I think at 12 p.m. Uh, New York time, and Natasha will be live with us tomorrow. So yeah. So that's 99U. If you go on uh, conference.99u.com, you will get more details. Uh, Chris Leo, why you so nasty and so jazzed? Okay, Eddie's song is trying to. <laughs> oh, Eddie. <laughs> I think do you know Eddie? Nast Magast is what he meant ah, to say. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do. Eddie is one of my good friends, too. Okay. He's the man. He's an African. They all animator. woke up for you. What? <laughs> they all woke up this morning for you. Yeah, I guess that's so. Great. It's really kind of them. Hi, people from Germany. Thanks for joining. Let's see all, all the, the things. things. Yeah. That's another one of my friends. All my friends are in the chat right now. Oh, that's awesome. We could see all the things now, I suppose. Yeah, I mean. It's kind of like my biggest thing that I've done recently, so we might as well dive in, okay. I guess. So where is all the things? Right here? here? Yeah. I have been featured on the hands after effects category. Mm -hmm. Nice. So I guess we could just start by watching it, I suppose. Okay, yeah, let's do it. Is there any sound as well, or no? Uh, the, no, it would be the audio. Oh, cool, cool. Um, and then I'll kind of like explain my yeah, process and everything. Yeah, is it, yeah, a, sure. is it a personal project? Yeah, personal project. That's why it won't really make any sense. <laughs> hey, Julia. Good to see you. Julia was a guest on How to Be Live today. That's great. Oh, cool. She's from Germany. Oh, I love this robot. Ah, uh, the music. The music is you good. To, yeah. yeah, you have to it's check part, it out. Yeah. My buddy uh, John Poon did the, did the sound. Extremely talented guy. Nice. He did an amazing job. So I would highly recommend checking his work out. Oh. <laughs> nice. Thank you. <laughs> oh. So there's eight total scenes in this project that are kind of like individual stories, right? So this is its own unique, doesn't really relate to it, the other ones in any way other than like the design. So trash guys, they have a lot of taste. You know, to, to be able to do that. In Paris, they don't do that. They don't paint <laughs> buildings. <no. laughs> oh, nice. Whoops. Yeah, the colors, Eddie. You saw that. Thanks, Eddie. <laughs> yeah. oh. Sounds 
like there's things going on. Yeah. You have the belt. So I guess the conference will start. It'll probably like it'll just move. It'll probably get quieter soon. Yeah. So all the things. So this is a personal project. Uh, so is it like on top of your daily work? Or? Yeah. So basically, the the way this was born is that. Oh, they love it. Hey, Thomas. Hi, guys. Essentially, how this was born was um, I was talking to one of my good buddies, Paul. He's the Russian Pixel on uh, Behance, if you want to check him out. Okay. I was talking to him, and we were like, oh, we should do something together. We should create some art. And we were like, hmm, well, we have all these models. And I was like, Paul, why don't you just send me some models, and then we'll start making some stories. Okay. So essentially, he sent me over some models, and we decided to make eight individual stories. So these are the stories? These are the stories, yeah with their own little titles, right? And they each have different kind of influences and they're inspired from different things. Like this one was inspired because... Uh, because you like to work defense games? Or? Yeah, actually. Yeah. I like, I used to play... <laughs> <laughs> My friends that know me will know that I used to play uh, phone games a lot, like Clash of Clans. I don't need more, but I used to. I used to play that game quite a bit. And, um, and yeah, so... <laughs> I apologize, I'm sick. So it was a really, really um, interesting process because it was kind of, I guess, directed sort of as we went. We didn't like start with this grand master plan. Okay. It was more like, oh, let's just make this one scene. This is really fun. What's the story for this one scene? Like maybe for the robots, for instance. It's this like really slow, clunky, big robot that kind of just like sits around and spits out paper. And let's maybe cut away and cut back. And it'll be like this tiny paper file, and then like this medium sized one, and then this really large, overwhelming one. Let's see, someone. Darina wants to know yeah. how, do you how break I down break down animation, animation process. Photoshop is Traitor in After Effects. Oh, because I guess she saw that, you know, that you use the three tools. Mm. So I guess, yeah, she wants to know more about the creative <laughs> process. So I guess Illustrator was, um, if you kind of scroll down, there's like some oh. Photoshop like color, color explorations, exploration. look dev kind of stuff, oh, like so Illustrator, different so design. Okay, so you would sketch first. Mm -hmm. My buddy Paul did all the modeling, so he did oh, okay. some of the like sketching and um, this like color palette thing, he kind of did that as well. Nice. And, um, and yeah, so I guess I can kind of go through each story, yeah. I suppose. So the robot story, or I guess we'll start with the tower. Essentially, it's like the idea was there's this little butterfly that's kind of really innocent, unassuming, flying towards this like massive tower. And as soon as it lands, it kind of does one of those like Wile E. Coyote cartoon sort of moments where it triggers like all these ridiculous defenses that are completely <laughs> unnecessary. Yeah, so it's like, oh wow. And they're all like pointing oh, like at middle age stuff. Yeah, yeah, like crossbows and axes and that sort of thing. And it kind of just points at this little. Wow. It's this little butterfly. I guess the idea is to, for us, was to, we wanted to create art that we thought was like funny and something that we liked okay. and we really like connected with. So each of these little pieces are kind of driven by humor a lot. Okay, now they want you to be live for three days. With, uh, <laughs> three so, days? So. I can barely do this for 10 minutes. I don't know about that. Oh, I'm just kidding. Yeah, because we do, so on Adobe Live, so this is a special one because we're live from the conference, so we welcome a lot of uh, creatives and artists. And the, um, the usually when you arrive, you arrive for a few days, and two hours per day per guest. You know, like so. So I would have to talk for two hours. No, you, you, you work on something. Oh, cool. Yeah. That's so you fun. work. So maybe you can create a new scene for all the things. Yeah, that would be fun. And, and then and you chat and you explain what you are doing and then cool. you take questions from the chat. And this would be live from San Francisco, so we have to invite you to San Francisco. If it's okay. That would be fine. My little brother lives there, so. Oh, okay, let's do it. Okay. <laughs> okay, so we'll do it. Okay, we will invite Chris. Uh, Maybe should I keep going through? Yeah, actually, there is a motion design stream coming this summer. Oh, cool. Okay, well, I, that I have the first fun. guest. I have the first guest. <laughs> yeah. Um, so the next scene. So yeah. this is Snap City. So the idea behind this was I really just wanted to explore. <laughs> Thanks for the bells in the chat. <laughs> That's pretty funny. <laughs> TED Talk, no, Handel. We're we need not more do Chris. That. Yeah, that's, you, you that's we have more Chris. Okay, we're working on it. These, see, these are just. I guess I might have told all my friends to get in the chat to make <laughs> me feel better about myself. Hey, it works. Oh, it does. <laughs> so thanks, guys. Okay, Snap City. This was um, essentially born from me just wanting to explore a lot more exaggeration in my animation. Mm -hmm. I really wanted to explore like. Yeah, you need to pick. Oh, okay. to do the right thing. Yeah, cool. I wanted to explore like playing with time and um, hang time and a lot of like 
really just anticipation in my animation. Um, and also, this uh, it reminds me this. Uh, uh, remember this uh, mini golf game? Oh, um, what um, game was it? Wonder, I feel like maybe Wonder I know. And uh, when you finish uh, a level, you know, it would just often oh, you really? have buildings like this. Yeah, I will share it with you. You will love it. Yeah, it probably has like a similar kind of it, vibe. It was a very old Flash game, and then they oh, they cool. did it on the iPhone. It's, it's really good. Oh, that's the robot. Oh, and now we're on to that, yeah. <coughs> so I just wanted to make it like something that's funny that people can like laugh at and relate to. Right. Like this massive, overwhelming amount of work that this slow, clunky robot is just kind of like, oh, you know. Ah, more cowbell, says Eddie. Yeah, it's a good one. Um, so yeah, so this scene was one of the ones that took the longest to animate. This one? Yeah, because initially the idea was that the bass would kind of come down the steps, okay. he would land, he would look around, no one reacts to him, and then, so he kind of like lands, he's like, oh, Dances. why did no one wake up? What's going on? Okay. And then he kind of like jumps up and does a bigger thing, and then oh, everyone sort of wakes up, right, and kind of comes alive. Initially, we were going to just have like some objects animate, like not the whole thing. There was and now everything is hundreds of keyframes, but then I just kind of like kept going and really going like and going. Ah, oh, thank you. The fact that you emulate that. Oh, so one thing that I try to do with like my 3D that I can maybe talk about a little bit is um, I want to like often bring 2D animation techniques into 3D. Yeah. So you know, like in those like old cartoons the, when. Yeah, 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 like a lot of squash and stretch yeah. and a lot of like duplicity, like duplicating the objects that are moving really quickly in motion blur, so that's, so good. that's what I try to do um, with the with the stuff that I do in cinema. Yeah, so this, yeah, this was this like, scene is ready. Wow. Yeah. it took a long time to animate because there's yeah. like so many different, every box moves, every oh cushion kind of, the only thing that doesn't really animate is the staircase. Yeah. <laughs> is the robot working for Wall Street? <laughs> <laughs> no, but maybe, I don't know. It kind of looks like it, right? I'm glad yeah. that I don't do that. And we're not so far from Wall Street. We're not. Yeah, maybe yeah. it is. Maybe, maybe it is. Fine. <laughs> or it is. Yeah. Okay, so, yeah, this one is very different. So, what with did this you one, have in mind? With this one, we wanted to kind of, so everything in the piece is very, um, like, very, like, fast. It's very explosive. Yeah. But this one, we wanted to kind of have something that was, like, a different tone. We wanted to have some scene that was a little more elegant feeling, something that kind of, broke out of the norm, so it wasn't just like the same animation over and over. Oh, okay. So for this one, we wanted to kind of just, and you'll hear it in the audio too, it kind of goes yeah. from like this huge party down to like this quiet Something moment that's like, animation. yeah, yeah. So that was the, the idea for that mirror wood. Oh, the pigeon. This character. So this is pretty funny. So I can, you know what is funny is that, so we will have a guest, uh, I think today, like within two hours. Her name, her name is a C, and she's a, an Adobe Creative resident. Uh, so creative residency is uh, for one year I be support uh, the creative, uh, giving like full resources just to focus on a, on a creative project. On like a personal project? Yeah. Oh, cool. And, um, and actually, um, during the, this Adobe Live event, for the first time, we will discover the new generation, like the 2017. Oh, no uh, way. So yeah, they are in New York, so they will be live for the first time. Right after you, actually, we will welcome two new creatives. Really? Uh, creative resident. And Sid was a creative resident last year, and she worked on a project called Trash Dogs which is a set of uh, emojis, you know, for the phone or Facebook. And <laughs> it really looks like this one. <laughs> like the same colors and stuff. The pigeon. So yeah. It's, it's I awesome. think I've seen like a meme that looks like this. And the funny thing is, is that no, we, so we did it. this, is that the meme? Yeah, that's the meme. Oh, she created it. Yeah. Well, we and, were and working on this for like over a year. And <laughs> I, this scene had already been done. It's and then crazy. this meme came out and I was like, oh man, everyone's going to think I copied this meme. <laughs> oh, I'm sure she so thought funny. that, yeah. That's so cool. She will sue you. You'll... She will. Oh, she yes, will. she should. Oh, yeah. I, I would sue me. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, so this scene, pigeons, oh they poop, God. right? No one likes to get pooped on. I like it. It's not fun. It's like chicken run. Yeah. yeah. So this scene was kind of born because my buddy was like walking his dogs. My buddy Paul, he's walking his dogs and he saw these what pigeons. <laughs> and he like just thought, I don't know. Here, I'll just scroll down. Let's see if I can find some that little section in here. Uh, you have some suggestions for your animation, like the, they say the later, like the, the stairs, or the later we can play oh, like Oh, that would have been so smart. Yeah. I don't know how to pronounce what? your name, but that is a very good idea yeah. that I actually really like. So, <laughs> this, this, is this very butthole. Important. Very important. Yeah. This butthole was kind of the birth of the inspiration of the scene. He was walking his dogs in Ireland, because that's where he lives, and uh, he like noticed that pigeons have prominent buttholes, so then he decided to model one. 
And then we were like, huh, what if the pigeons pooped on this house and they revealed all the color? That'll that's be fun. It's a good story. Yeah, so that's, <laughs> it's underwhelming, I know. So this but is how you find inspiration. Like, pigeon call. buttholes, yeah. yeah. yeah that's good. <laughs> oh, man. Well, I love this scene, I really love it. Oh yeah, Handel says that we should use the actual proper way to frame through animations in Vimeo. Thanks, oh, bro. Yeah. Appreciate it. So what is the... <coughs> oh, there are like keyboard shortcuts? I guess? Yeah, yeah, if you hold shift and then you use the arrow keys, you can just like frame oh, that's through. Right. There we go. Mm -hmm. Oh my yeah. god. Nice, right? I'm not even... I'm, I'm too nervous. I'm not with it, right? I'm not with it enough. Okay, we will use the keyboard shortcut now. Thanks. And this one? Well, so it so looks this like... Um, it's, like a, it's like a topiary, but it's yeah. also like... This rubber, stretchy, weird material that I don't really know what it is, but it's like it's like rubbery. It's like this weird kind of plastic, okay. and um, I don't really know necessarily the inspiration behind the, all these little details. But Paul wanted to create something where it would kind of burst apart and have all these tiny little, really toy-like, plastic-looking tubes. And it looks like. You know, like when you have um, you open a body. Yeah, like you organs, know? like, yeah, like cross section yeah. of organs. Yeah. Yeah, here with the tubes and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Danielle thought it was funny that we modeled a butthole. Thanks. <laughs> uh, so how do you model something like it looks like, a, you know, oh, like very elastic? Or... Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he um, oh, he God. does a lot of like subdivision modeling. So he'll take primitives that are very low poly, and then okay. use like a subdivision object in Cinema. Oh, to oh my God. To control um, the roundness of like the edges. Okay. Yeah. And I think if you scroll down, maybe there might be some. Oh yeah, some uh, some behind the scenes. We try to do like behind the scenes stuff. Okay. Um. So. Maybe like if yeah like if you kind of you can kind of see like the wireframe a little bit. Yeah. Of like how he'll use like subdivision modeling, especially here. Oh my god. Okay. <coughs> Paul is one of the best modelers that I know. You should definitely check out his work too. Yeah. I I try to work with him a lot. We're about to do a job for uh, Disney for some like logo animations, oh. so that will be fun. I probably shouldn't talk about it, but it's okay. <laughs> Don't tell <laughs> no anyone. No one will know, it's yeah. fine. And, um, okay, maybe we should invite him also yeah. to be like with you in yeah, the show. Yeah, that would be awesome. And you can work on it Yeah, way. that would be so fun. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, but I so like the way you share also, like the behind the scenes. It's, it's, it's very... I mean, yeah. the There's more so you much share, content. Yeah. Well. It took us so long to make the project because it was like in our free time, right? It wasn't like... Oh, okay. So would, how long did it take? It took like about a year and a month, oh. start to finish. Okay. So... And then how did you... Because it has been, um, uh, you know, picked by Vimeo, like a mm -hmm. big. so... Um, did you have any, um, you know, promotion plan in mind? Or you just upload it on Vimeo and say, okay, let's see what happens? Or just put we it on Behance? Just, and, yeah, we kind of just threw it on Behance and... Um, well, there's a, there's a little story to this. Most of it, we kind of were like a little bit shocked, right? We, were, we just published our project and we were like, wow, people really like it. That's cool. Didn't expect that necessarily. But I was I was working at Buck at the time and I was um, it also got on Motionographer, like the project. I was working at Buck and I was sitting next to um, my friend, my now friend, Erica Gorichow. She's uh, She used to work at Motionographer. And she's an amazing, talented um, artist. And I was showing her this piece and she's like, oh, you know, I should send this to Justin, Justin Cohn, the guy who runs it. Yeah. And maybe he'll like throw it on there. And um, oh. and then she did, and then yeah, it's he a did. Big platform too. Yeah. <laughs> to promote motion design. He did, and that yeah, we was love like, motion it was really, it was really cool. We really love this, this platform. And uh, <laughs> hey, Gordon Reed is in the chat. Yeah. Thanks for the comment, Gordon. Appreciate. <laughs> Gordon is a illustrator, graphic designer from London. Oh, cool. He was live with us a few weeks back. Everyone uh, likes your haircut. I don't know what's happening. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, guys. Uh, I like it too. Looks okay. good, man. Yeah, okay, thanks. Yeah. Yeah. Usually I never take care of my hair, so I, I guess that's why I was very really? surprised. Usually it's just a mess. <laughs> so. uh, well, okay. it's styling, so it could work. So, yeah, so what I wanted to ask you because, when I, um, because it's like one year, you know, a lot of work. Uh, of energy, um, late nights. So Often is it I was worth like the working. In, like, is it worth it? Yeah. Oh, yeah, hundred percent. So what are the benefits you know, of working on, like for our friends you know watching or working on a personal project on the side and just PR yourself to this project? So if you can share with us the yeah the benefits. Well, I think I, at least for me, I try to always like I view my um, my client work as like a job in terms of okay. I can't necessarily express myself fully, right? But I kind of became a motion designer so that I could make art and express myself and like 
just try to make things that I really love. So I think it's super, super, super important. Like I'm always trying to do personal projects and just, I don't know, create something that I want to create that I can, I guess, really put myself behind and feel like I have a, a really clear voice in because often in client work, you don't really necessarily have the final say often and you don't have free reign and you don't really always have the ability to really have like your own voice. Oh, and so I just really, I think it's really important and it was, a, it was a pretty grueling process. It was a long time. Oftentimes it was ebb and flow. I would work on something like this. I worked on it for like a month straight. <coughs> but then I would like take breaks and work on client work and that kind of thing. But I think it's really worth it if you can to kind of really pull yourself into whatever personal project you're yeah. doing. And this is something in a style that you love, that you represent mm -hmm. yourself. So yeah. It was like when yesterday I was talking about you to the creative director of the, of the, of the, of the conference. This is what I, 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 I showed him. So mm -hmm. I showed all the things. And after a few seconds, I was like, okay, that's it. <laughs> so. Yeah, and, I, I, and what you said kind of like I really resonate with in terms of trying to create something that is of your own voice. I feel like my personality is, a, I mean, for people that know me, I'm like kind of an outgoing person. I kind of am often too loud sometimes, too expressive. And I think that that kind of reflects in my work a little bit in terms of I like to make things that are very brightly colored, that are very expressive, you know, that are very playful and I guess fun. I try to like always have fun. Yeah, this is awesome. The primary tools uh, that I use, Cinema 4D, yeah, Cinema 4D Octane, yeah. After Effects, yeah, Photoshop, Illustrator. And then there is a lot of work with uh, sound designers. So do you always work with the same uh, sound designers? Or? Um, yeah, I find myself that I'm. I find that I'm often, often working with John because we like have a friendship. We met like at a conference maybe a couple years ago. Huh. And um, yeah, is it a motion design conference? Um, kind of. We were actually premiering a motion. It wasn't a motion design conference, but we were premiering a piece that we had both worked on together oh. at the conference. Nice. So yeah. Uh, my wife is in the chat. She says hi. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. Oh my Love God. you. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I see. Uh, yeah. Miss Guyot. Yeah. Madame Guyot in the chat. Madame. Yeah. So um, yeah. And uh, yeah. Oh, Kathleen is in the chat too, and she says that yeah, she she really had a she has a hard time like balancing you know between personal work and real work. Uh, it do, is a discipline. Do you have thing. any? Yeah. So do I you have any advice? I think it's a discipline thing, routine, but or? I guess it's it can be it can be challenging, but I think like. When I create personal work, I tend to be so excited by it that, like, I'm often driven just to do it. Okay. Often, I mean, I'll like want to, you know, I'll be at the end of the day, I might come home and be tired and be like, okay, I want to just watch TV or do nothing or veg out. But sometimes I'm like, man, I'll be at work, I'll be thinking about this piece that I want to make, this like thing that I want to do, and I'll like be so excited that I'll get home and um, and like just start working on it. Oh yeah, and we kind of do this thing where we lay it all out in Photoshop so it's better to scroll so you can't really yep. click on it as well. Yeah, that's right. But the, uh, I like also this idea, like especially for motion designers watching, because if you start like working on a piece or a story of 30 seconds that goes from A to Z, and you know it will take one year, it can be very hard to you know, motivate yourself. So I like this idea of having like... A, you know, little scenes. Little scenes mm -hmm. and you work on the story of each scene, on the mood bar of each scene, um, and you collaborate with another designer, yeah. another in this case, uh, which also brings extra motivation you know, that's when you collaborate. It totally does. It helps to have someone to bounce ideas off of. It's, it's, it's a quite recent project. I see that you published it in uh, yeah, March, yeah, in almost March. April. So yeah, it's super recent. Yeah. yeah. It's a huge success. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. You already got customers? Uh, mm -hmm. yeah. We have not, you, not a ton, but some, yeah. Yeah, yeah. some have. Awesome. <coughs> yeah, it's very the Disney recent. thing. Oh, okay. Yeah, the, the one you're not supposed to talk <laughs> yeah, about. Yeah, that one. I, eh, it's <laughs> fine, whatever. <laughs> Oh, uh, but yeah, I think that like when you're, when you have a friend that you can collaborate with, that help, that makes all the difference in the world. And then when you also have a project that you can break down into bite sizes, right? Recently I was at um, another conference and someone was talking about personal work and they were saying that you should essentially take your whole idea, everything you have, and then cut it in half in terms of scope, right? Okay. And then cut it in half again. And that is going to be something that you're able to basically complete because if you have a project that you're doing a personal piece and um, you put all this energy into it but you never complete it and you never publish it like it yeah. serves a purpose in terms of you learn from it but it doesn't serve a purpose in terms of like if you're not sharing it like no one knows about it and it 
doesn't necessarily have the impact that it should, that it deserves to have. Actually, you know it's exactly the purpose of the 99 New Girlfriends? Really? You know why it's 99? Mm -hmm. uh, so this is this uh, sentence by Edison where it said like, uh, like uh, one person is having an idea, you know, so you get the idea, the inspiration, but what is the most important are the 99 persons where you have to achieve the idea and so on. Yeah. So all the talks at 99 New are people who had an idea, but they explain how they, how they finish the work. So you know, like, uh, how you achieve the final piece so you can share it and you don't you don't have any blocker in the process or you just you know, or it takes you I don't know like six years to write a book. No no. The, so that the, the experience that they're sharing on stage. That's awesome. That's ninety nine. I love that because I feel like yeah. that that idea is just so like near and dear to my heart in terms of yeah that's that's really cool. And uh, thanks, Evil Stories, for sharing the link to uh, Chris Bio Behance uh, portfolio. Make sure to follow him. Make oh, sure to give some appreciation. Oh, there is a new one. Look. Oh, I published this. Boom. Oh, thank you. I published this last <laughs> night. So, this was a project that I did for Ted Baker. They're like a fashion company. Right, they, it's very big. Yeah, yeah. They're a fashion company in London. And so, essentially, they had like these three different products. Um, these three different jewelry design products that uh, they wanted to create a different world for. So, there was like this little robot guy, and there was like this little bunny, and then there was like a fairy. And they wanted to kind of create a lush environment, a lush populated world based on each of the different characters nice. so um, we designed or I designed these different scenes and um, yeah and this uh, animated uh, GIF so this is something they're using also in their communication mm -hmm. yeah, for emails for instance or mm -hmm. the website. yeah 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 um, yeah so so how do you okay I have a good question for you how yeah. do you create the GIFs <laughs> well do you go through Photoshop Photoshop yes <laughs> <laughs> people use like this product called GIF gun in After Effects but I've never used it myself yeah no, the funny story is that uh, we used to have an export to animated GIF in After Effects like a long time ago. Oh, really? And we discontinued the feature because we're like, okay, no one is using GIF anymore. And then it was... <laughs> <laughs> now, <laughs> now everyone does. Yeah. yeah. Like, it's a okay. thing. Dribble really helped with that too, I think. Because everyone, yeah. uses, um, everyone uses GIFs on Dribble a whole lot. So and basically, it's, it's wow. like this exact same scene, right? That are just populated with these different, these different elements. Oh, and the color things. Yeah, means. and the color will switch based on the different characters. So, um, so yeah, this is like a little robot scene, and this is like heavily populated with nuts and bolts and, <laughs> nice. excuse me. Wow. Yeah. Fresh new app, yeah. June 7th. Yeah, yesterday. It's from yesterday, okay? Like last night, like super Make late. sure to share this one on Behance, because you know how Behance works. Like if you appreciate the project, then um, all the people who follow you on Behance, uh, it will appear in the activity feed, you know? So when you go on Behance, it will be visible here. You like a project. Oh, and this is us. Oh, cool. <laughs> the activity. Hey, there's me. Yeah, this is That's it. fun. <laughs> oh, Lego okay. pieces. Yeah. So, Chris, uh, during this LB Live show, there is something really special because we, uh, we asked our friends from the community to share their portfolio and uh, we just want to, you to have a look at uh, cool. two portfolios, you know, and give some feedback. And we have the Behance portfolio, an amazing animation. And we're back. Oh, hi. It was awesome. I hope it was awesome. Hi again. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's the first uh, one. This is someone from uh, Moscow, Moscow in Russia. Cool. Let's check this out. Phil, uh, Phil, if you're in the chat, let us know. Yeah, Phil, are okay, you here? Say, hi, I'm Phil from Moscow. And uh, the idea is just to you know, discover some work uh, <laughs> from people in the community. And uh, yeah, just enjoy what you're doing and uh, have some Chris opinion on what you're doing. Hey Jessica, good to see you. So I will let you know if uh, Phil is uh, with us. Okay, cool. So I really, first of all, I really like this presentation. Yeah. I like, I love when people on Behance, like, and I've been trying to do this with my own work more, use like custom logos, basically use like imagery, imagery for the, oh, yeah. for their, for the, uh, for the title. Yeah, I, I, that's awesome. Yeah. Oh, yeah, right. On the left. I'm always, I'm always doing this. Oh, one. Right. Maybe I'll move this slightly over. Cool. So I guess this is a project called Space Center. It's about. Um, 25th anniversary of some NASA yeah, thing. So there's pretty this, cool. There's the, the, the stories, so that's good. I love this style frame presentation, it's really nice. Ooh, some motion. 
I, yeah. Another thing is I, that I'm trying to do too a little bit more is show work, work in progress. Yeah. yeah, I think it's really cool, and I think people like love to see oh, behind the scenes. play Vimeo. Oh, I didn't know you could do that. I didn't actually like either. Yeah. It looks great. Yeah, it's a good, uh, good job, Phil. Yeah, Phil, killing you, man. So I guess let's talk about some of the motion. Maybe I'll and that's the play. final video. Yeah. Let's see. So. Oh, Space Center in Houston. Okay. Maybe I'll click through it a little bit. Oh, I think it's an interactive piece inside the center. Oh, cool. You see, like, you, yeah, yeah, you, yeah. you like, visiting an exhibition. Yeah. Oh, here oh right. there it is. Yeah. Wow. Oh, it's really beautiful. I think you did a good job with the design. I like that, I like that there's um, this kind of UI thing, Yeah. you know, going on with it, because I think it makes sense given the context. <coughs> yeah, if there is one opportunity to, <laughs> when you deal with space, you know, Star Trek, Iron Man. This is the, this this is the, the one, right? There. Yeah. Nice. It's cool to see a piece that's actually in the, the space too. Yeah. Like to see it in the context of like the actual live, how it's being viewed yeah. on site. It's yeah. pretty pretty neat. It's very well produced. Mm -hmm. Maybe we'll explore more down. I yeah. think there's some more stuff here. Oh the credits. Oh uh, and the team. Yeah. So that's the first project. Maybe we can so there were a lot of people working on this. So he worked on the art direction and motion graphics. Yeah. I think it looks pretty cool. I don't really have any like I don't know if I have anything constructive to say other than I think that it serves the it does the job well and looks good. I wanted you to see Oh I this love one. this one. This one is kind of like it's a little similar to my style. Yeah, that's you know? why I wanted to yeah, yeah, this is pretty cool. I love the design of this. I think it's really striking. I even the project that I recently shared yeah, with like with the, the rose Ted gold, Baker. Ted Baker yeah. has like this kind of like rose gold <laughs> vibe to it, so that's pretty funny. Um, <coughs> and, uh, I really love the design. I don't fully know what the concept is in terms of. I know it's nine of diamonds, but I don't know necessarily uh, yeah. what what is it. What this uh, means? Maybe maybe share most of the story behind this. Yeah, like is I guess if we. Yeah. I think this is a really cool looking design. I'm just not fully sure, like what the purpose is and what it means. Um, maybe I'm just kind of like missing the concept, but do you see that there's these other little diamonds here? Yeah. Um, but one thing that I would maybe, that I would maybe look at, where did the video go? Oh, here it is. Oh, yeah. I think that this like kind of super UI style is really nice. <coughs> but I think that he could have maybe, if he were to do something a little bit different, was take time and build it out a little bit slower. Because there's so much beautiful content oh. here, right? There's so many beautiful lines. We could spend a little bit of time like animating them on, like more sequentially, I suppose. Mm. Could be nice. Could be something to explore. I mean, maybe okay. he was limited by time constraints, right? Yeah. But I don't really know. But um, but yeah, I think overall the design of this is really nice. And maybe this this leaf, instead of it kind of like flying as in it as a whole object from the top, as okay. kind of like big palm branch, it could maybe like build on and then kind of like unfurl out or something. Could be nice to explore, just like different ideas. At least something that how I would approach it. Not necessarily the right or wrong way to do anything, I suppose. And someone's asking like for your work, uh, how do you, how do you choose the color or palette? The color um, often I will use. I have used Adobe Color, but yeah. usually I will just start with like, okay, this is like my main, maybe maybe two or three colors, and then I'll throw them in Photoshop, and then I will. Um, use like the different hue saturation tools and basically start messing around with like adjustment layers to really kind of define what is working and what isn't. Maybe I'll change values like that, but I try to basically set a few values and then edit all of the values based on one or two parameters so like they're more cohesive. I don't okay. know if that makes sense. Yeah. But I think that's really cool. Maybe we could do Genesis. One more, yeah. One yeah, more yeah. I feel. <coughs> I really like this piece. It looks really awesome. Okay, I often wonder where Matt the place of man anymore. So I think it's a, it's a personal deep. project. Yeah. yeah. It has like a deep meaning to it, it seems. Okay. Wow. Yeah. It's really beautiful. All these like little details in there yeah. are really nice. I guess I feel that so. Yeah, yeah, it's cool. I think it's like the story of this orb, right? It's yeah. like traveling through. Yeah, traveling. This like galactic, massive galaxy thing. I like yeah. the pacing of it. I think it's really cool to have this like slow story that's being told. Hi, Robert. Thanks for joining. <coughs> oh, yeah, look at that.
<laughs> it reminds me of this old video game, uh, Mist. Yeah, Mist yeah, yeah, yeah. It does, it does have a concept, mist feel. Yeah, with the golden object. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's cool to just kind of like see like all the different art also... and the light effects are really nice too. Like watching the sphere affect the scene as it goes through, especially yeah. in this area. It's really cool. I think my favorite piece, my favorite um, element in this whole in this whole video is actually these little dudes over here because okay. there's they have so much personality and the way oh, they yeah. move and they're just so fun. <laughs> they're like, hi. <laughs> you know? So those are really, really nice, really well done. It's nice to have like this this contrasting element that has so much character amidst the super large, yeah. vast, slow moving scene. So good job, Phil. Yeah. This is he cool. Phil is also using uh, Cinema 4D. He is. He's probably rendering an octane too, maybe. Yeah. Is he in the chat yet? Have we seen him? Um, not yet. No. <coughs> okay. There is another one uh, I wanted you uh, to review. So thanks, Phil, for sharing. Awesome job. And uh, make sure to follow Phil, Phil also, the link is in the chat, and give some appreciation. And uh, we have uh, Nune, and she's from Armenia. Cool. So I was uh, <coughs> very happy to get an entry from Armenia. And uh, I've really been attracted by this project, uh, taking uh, because she started from old pictures of uh, yeah, Soviet modernism buildings. And uh, adding the animations, I find it super interesting. Cool. So these are the animations, and here you can see that I she's, love seeing the process work Yeah, here. she's building on the old picture. My immediate thought is that I love the color palette. I think that it works for the context, right? It feels like this old retro kind of vintage, yeah. this vintage thing. <coughs> the animation is really nice, too. It's, um, it's pretty simple. It's clean. It's like this nice looping gif. Yeah. Um, I like how she, she matched the photo, but I wonder if... Something that maybe that I would do a little bit differently would be to explore, like, you know how it's matched like perfectly to the to the pixel in terms of like the line and the content. I would explore maybe having less detail because I think oh. that then your shapes like these kind of some things kind of get lost like these little bricks and like these tiny lines mm. sort of make the design a little bit busy. But I think that um, if you kind of would remove those, it would be a little bit stronger in terms of um, being more of a clear focal point. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I think it's a really cool idea. I like the idea of taking something old and building off of it. Yeah. This building is outside. Right? Yeah, this is really cool. But again, I think that you could use less detail okay. like in these tiny, tiny areas. Like we don't really we're never gonna necessarily read what that says. Mm. I also don't know Russian, but if or wait, what language would it be? Armenian. Armenian, yeah. I don't necessarily know um, how to read it, but I think that if you kind of were to make this just a one big shape, mm. it would be a little bit more abstract and a little bit more digestible. Like, especially at these smaller gift sizes. But the motion is really cool. I think it's a really, really interesting piece. And again, the color palette, I think, works really well. I really love these circles here. I think this is like kind of an example of oh, taking something a little more abstract, right? And not necessarily going super, super literal, but kind of adding a little bit of detail, okay. but still allowing like this overall shape to kind of be a hero element, right? Like this shape could be a little bit more heroic in terms of if it was a little bit less, I guess maybe if these were like big blocks of color, big block okay. of a color in the panels, that could be cool. Maybe like combining them mm -hmm. and just kind of simplifying it to kind of like make it a little bit easier for someone to digest. To kind of digest. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's really cool. I think it's this concept again is, is really interesting. Starting from the old photo, I love seeing the process yeah. of that. Good. And Nuna, maybe one more from Nuna. Let's, let's try this one. The visa? Yeah. yeah, this is cool. I was immediately drawn to the colors. Yeah. You know, I really like the, the design of the colors and um, no, the palette. Yeah. It seems really like cohesive. Mm -hmm. <coughs> oh, Nuna, she's in the chat. Oh, hi. Nice Never to been. meet you. Yeah, good job. This animation is really nice too. It's really well executed. Like yeah. it just moves very, very yeah. It, it just moves like it has a nice ease on it. I really like that ball transition. That was really cool. How it like kind of oh, yeah. yeah. My so one thing that I was thinking while this design is super beautiful, mm -hmm. I uh, since it's kind of interesting to watch something and it's in a different language because you kind of realize is are just the visuals alone yeah. enough to tell the story, and I don't know if I fully know. Okay, I just from looking at it. 
I don't know what the story is per se, because I also can't. I heard it with the audio earlier. I couldn't necessarily, you know, don't yeah. know the language. But I was wondering if there was a way because this is such a beautiful design. If there's a way to tell the story where you could mm. immediately know just based on the visuals, not based on any sort of audio text. or right. yeah text or language, like what the story is. So maybe that would be worth exploring too. Um, one other thing about the design is I like these little dots that kind of add like these subtle details. I think that's really nice. Yeah. <coughs> um, if I were to do one thing, I would maybe have less lines here, like, and have them maybe spaced a little bit more like these dots are spaced. It looks like these are very, very close together. Um, but I love this, like, this gradation is really, really beautiful with these colors and these purples. Really, really awesome. And I really love this frame too, this overhead. Oh, yeah. Super simplistic, super clean design. Super Dig efficient. It. Yeah. yeah, it's really cool. And for Visa, I mean, it's a big brand. It is. Yeah. So yeah, I guess how to tell the story without using a, without using a, sing a yeah. single word. It's a good point, yeah. Could be something to explore. Hmm. Awesome. Yeah, let's play through the rest yeah. of it, I suppose. But yeah, the emotion feels really nice. Yeah, the transitions. Transitions are really good too, yeah. yeah this is a lot of after effects work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. <laughs> wow. <coughs> I love the map also. The yeah, the map is really cool. Yeah, yeah. One other thing that could be interesting to explore is that these objects, th and th again, this is just like nitpicking little details that maybe, yeah, I mean, you know, you could kind of think through a little bit. Like these objects all have the exact same rotation keyframes. If you look at like mm -hmm. at how they rotate, it could be nice to offset them a little bit so that it feels like each one is its own individual oh, element. So like if you look at these these um, these balls in the corner, mm -hmm. it's really nice how they animate out and I love like their rotation, but if you just were to offset that slightly, then it would feel like there's these own unique objects that are kind of emanating, you know? And again, I don't know how it was built, so it may not work. But I think it could be something that would be worth exploring. Little yeah. tiny little details like that make the difference. And hey guys, so Nune is in the chat, so yeah, let's all say uh, congratulations, Nune. I can see uh, her name. Yeah, it's really, really nice. This piece is really good. Yeah, I love it. It's just really professional. It, yeah. The color palette is really great. Yeah, yeah it's very good. Cool. What time is it? Oh, it's almost time. Okay. Let me check. That went by so fast. Oh my god, yeah, look at that. Okay, so <laughs> I think we can go back here somewhere. And uh, thank you, Chris. Thank you for sharing. having me, I appreciate it. And uh, thanks for sharing your work and your story and uh, also reviewing the work from our community. Uh, people watching, stay with us because we will be live for seven more hours. We welcome a new Adobe Creative Residence. In five minutes on AdobeLive.com, we'll welcome Aud uh, Andre and uh, Julie. She's from uh, uh, Germany. Andre is from New York, actually, and they are two photographers. Oh, cool. Yeah. Very young, very talented photographers, so uh, it will be the first time we will discover their work. So stay with us. And uh, yeah, Chris, hopefully I will see you on Adobe Live right? yeah, for a thank longer you for stream. Having me. And, uh, I appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, your work is really awesome. Thanks for watching, everyone. Um, we will. Um, no, no, no. I don't have seven minutes. Come on, guys. <laughs> Come on. So, yeah, so we're still live from 99U. And uh, Chris, again, thank you. It was really a, a pleasure. And um, good luck with your project. Good luck with all the things. Thank you so much. I appreciate <laughs> it. Thank you for having me on. It was fun to be able to share. And we'll be back in five uh, minutes on adobelive.com with two Adobe Creative Residents, Andre and Julia. Bye, everyone. Bye.